Um, I would like to thank the organizers for my invitation. Um, unfortunately, uh, as you see, it wouldn't uh, any graph in my talk, but um, nevertheless, it has a uh, strong combinatorial flavor. So um, let me start from a well-known little bit conjecture from uh, the theory of uh, exponential sums. We have a set from Z and consider its Fourier transform that the following finest sum. Uh, little bit conjecture says that uh, is it true that uh, L1 norm of Fourier transform can be um, estimated non trivially from below? Uh, a trivial estimate for this uh, mean is one, but a uh, uh, little conjecture asks much more. Is it true that logarithm is a good low estimate? Mm. It was a long standing conjecture uh, and it was proved independently by Kanagin and McGee, Pinga, and Smith. Uh, it's easy to see that uh, because of we have the following example of a set A that is just arithmetic progression, A2 and so on. Uh, we have uh, that this bound, uh, logarithmic bound, for the mean is tight. So, um, little conjecture says us that uh, the worst case, uh, in the sense of this uh, L1 norm, uh, is an arithmetic progression. And uh, in other words, it says that there is an e a universal bound for any set of Z such that this L1 norm uh, is bounded from the below. Um, that is a direct result, a direct low bound for something. But of course, if you have a um, uh, bound, uh, then we can also ask the inverse question. What can we say about sets, uh, about sets H such that uh, this guy is close to logarithm. Is it true that such sets are exactly arithmetic progressions, or it seems like um, like an arithmetic progressions uh, have, in other words, have um, strong additive structure? And uh, in some sense, it uh, is true. And uh, to formulate mm, the general equation here, let me give some definitions. Uh, if you have a set from Z to C, uh, then, of course, one can consider Fourier transform of this uh, functions, function f. Uh, I don't want to talk about the convergence of this series. It's not the aim of my talk. Um, then this L1 norm, L1, oh, sorry, 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 sorry. Uh, L1 mean of Fourier transform of f is called Wiener norm of the function f. And uh, it's easy to see that uh, embedding this norm uh, gives us a Banach algebra in the sense that if we have two functions with ordinary pointwise uh, multiplication, then uh, the norm of, of the product doesn't exceed the product of the norm. Uh, so this space the space of functions with finite Wiener norm is a Banach algebra. So uh, our literal conjecture says, what can we say about Wiener norm of any characteristic function of my set A, of, of, the, of, of a, a set A? OK, so um, mm. uh, uh, let's... Uh, make uh, a built eye look at this problem. Uh, let uh, G be an abelian group here. I'm not going to talk about a general abelian group here, but um, it's, um, mm. it's, it's useful to have in mind um, uh, the general answer, who says uh, which kind of sets are Extramal, uh, extramal in the sense of Wiener norm. So a very general result of Green and Sanders says that, that if you have an abelian group, then uh, 
the condition of having small Wiener norm of a set A means that my set A can be represented as a short combinations of shifted subgroups H, J, uh, with uh, coefficients plus minus ones. So uh, it's very useful to, 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 to have in mind this theorem because uh, it says that, that who are our main enemies? Our main enemies are subgroups. Uh, it's easy to see that any subgroup have, has really small Wiener norm, and uh, this um, green Sanders result says uh, that actually there's the general case, any set with small Wiener norm can be represented uh, like some union of, uh, uh, of subgroups of, of group G. So uh, it's very natural to consider the simplest case of uh, Green Sanders theorem, that's a group, finite group, <coughs> which uh, has no non-trivial subgroups at all. That is just uh, the prime field. Uh, we have prime number, and uh, uh, of course, considering Z or PZ, uh, we have just two trivial subgroups of these objects, zero and uh, uh, the whole group. Of course, one can define uh, the Fourier transform of function in the usual way and also consider Wiener norm of such function. And uh, the question, uh, is it true that some analog of little conjecture also holds in the prime field? The answer is positive. But unfortunately, we have not complete analog of a little conjecture in the case. So suppose that we have uh, a prime number and let A be a set of FP, uh, a subset of FP of density eta. And suppose that the density eta is less than one half. Um, let's discuss this condition. Uh, in, this, in some sense, it's, it seems a little bit stupid because uh, uh, if I have a set um, with a density greater than one half, I, of course I can consider the complement of my set with almost the same Wiener norm. But on the other hand, we remember that there are just uh, that there are enemies uh, in FP, even in FP, that is zero subgroup and the whole group. So this condition, uh, having this condition, we are separate from the whole group. So we are killing one enemy uh, cheaply. <coughs> Sorry. So uh, if I have this condition, and suppose that on the other hand, the density of my set A is rather uh, large, uh, we have the following lower bound uh, for the Wiener norm of my set A. So you see, even in the case when eta is uh, positive, we have just square root of log uh, in this situation, and it's, that is um, pretty far from uh, uh, little conjecture here. Uh, on the other hand, um, in this bound, we have this nasty term, eta, who says that, that um, uh, if eta is really small, then this bound is uh, um, usefulness. Uh, one more time. Uh, suppose that my set A has really small Wiener norm, not logarithm, but log log of P or log 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 of P. Uh, what uh, this system A says that if this guy is really small, it, it can be in the only case when the eta is really small. This corresponds to Green and Sanders result. If my set is separate from the whole subgroup, it should be close to the smallest one, to the remain enemy. Uh, of course, it uh, coincides with uh, uh, Green Sanders result, but, but that is uh, a more uh, quantitative form of it. Okay, so our first result is the following ugly theorem. Uh, uh, we have uh, some new lower bounds uh, in the more or less the same situation. 
uh, and uh, let me skip it immediately and uh, uh, I, I, I mentioned just a consequence of this theorem. We have a non-trivial uh, bound in Littlewood equation uh, in Fp just for sets of this density. So it's a, a little bit smaller than uh, uh, we have from Sander's theorem, but not so smaller. So the proof is the following. Uh, we have a really... Uh, thin set, and um, we want to apply Sander theorem, theorem to make it thicker. How can we do this? Consider a set and consider a shift of this set. Of course, the shift, any shift of, uh, of my set with small Wiener norm has the same Wiener norm. After that, I can um, consider the union of my sets, which is not a set, uh, I mean, uh, the sum of characteristic function is not a characteristic function, of course, but uh, uh, considering random shifts, uh, I can control the intersections. That's the proof, more, more or less. <coughs> uh, on the other hand, if we have a really small set of size log of p, it's easy to see that there is a full uh, analog of Littlewood conjecture in FP. The argument is very simple. Suppose that we have a really small set A of FP of size logarithm of P, then using Dirichlet theorem, we can uh, approximate any element of uh, AJ, uh, finding non-zero Q, say that this guy is, uh, say, less than 1 over 3. Uh, uh, it's not a norm, it's uh, the distance to the nearest integer. So, because if we can uh, consider multiplication in FP, it means that uh, some multiplicative dilation of A uh, leaves in a really short segment of uh, uh, ZP. Uh, this guy has the same Wiener norm, and uh, because of these inclusions, it means that uh, my set A doesn't differ so much from, the, uh, uh, from some set in Z. More precisely, in this situation, if some deletion lives in small segment, I can apply the arguments of uh, the integer case and obtain uh, the following analog. The following analog of, of little book conjecture. Okay, so our second theorem uh, is the following. Mm, suppose that my set A is not so small. Then we have uh, 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 the same lower bound as in little conjecture in the D. Uh, the main idea here is uh, computing of additive dimension of A, and let me define what is the additive dimension. Mm. Additive dimension of a set is an analog of, uh, of just ordinary dimension. Suppose that we have an abelian group. Uh, we say that lambda is a dissociated subset of G uh, or basis is in some sense. If uh, considering any equation of such a form that is uh, a combination of elements of lambda with plus minus ones, we have that uh, Actually, any such equation uh, has just trivial solution. So it means that um, there is no short additive relations between elements of lambda, say like x plus y equals z. In some sense, lambda is a basis. There, is no, there are no uh, any additive relations between elements of lambda. Uh, for example, if g equals f2 to the n, then lambda is a truly basis of this guy. So the dimension of a set A is the size of the largest dissociated subset of the set. So the size of the largest basis. And uh, our main lemma here that any set with small Wiener norm uh, has really small additive dimension. It gives us uh, some structure of a set A, 
for example, additive progression, uh, uh, any additive progression uh, has dimension log uh, of the size of A. Uh, in other words, it means that any element of A can be represented as a combination of elements of lambda uh, with coefficients plus minus ones. And lambda is just uh, uh, a set of this size. So after that, uh, the proof is uh, pretty short. Uh, let us use Dirichlet theorem not for the any element of A, but just for elements of this basis. Then by the triangle inequality, we can approximate not only elements of lambda, but all elements of A with one source here. It means that QA also lives in uh, P, minus, uh, P over 3 minus P over 3 to P over 3. And after that, we apply uh, the integer technique uh, for this dilation of A. So, uh, so uh, the main uh, lemma follows from the f uh, from this combinatorial observation. Uh, if you have a set with small winner norm, then uh, this set must be additively rich. It means that there are a lot of uh, solutions of this equation. Uh, uh, between elements of my set A. Moreover, the same bound for, uh, holds for any subset of A, for any B, which is a subset of A. So, uh, if I have a set with small norm, uh, more or less it's uh, mm, very easy to see that it uh, cannot be large basis. So, in other words, it should uh, have small dimension because there are a lot of relations between elements of, of my set A. If I have a set uh, without relation, it should be small by, by, by this lemma. And, uh, uh, and more precisely, the proof is the following. Let us take, oh, sorry, sorry. Let us take uh, a basis set, a, the maximum dissociated subset of A, then, by my lemma, uh, uh, the number of solutions of this equation is large, but from the other hand, lambda is a basis, so there are no solutions of this equation, except trivial ones. Uh, trivial ones is the following, when my uh, right-hand side is just a permutation of left-hand side. That is k factorial times uh, lambda to the k, uh, and uh, there are some, a few exceptions uh, where uh, some elements can coincide, but it just uh, gives us some constant C here. So after that, I uh, have this bound uh, on lambda, and K is a parameter, so optimizing, I, I obtain uh, the required lower bound. So what can we say about sets of medium size? For smaller, we are done. For larger, Sanders uh, proved uh, a lower bound, but uh, what can you say about sets of medium size? That is our result in this direction here, the following lower bound, and uh, uh, it gives us firstly a non-trivial lower bound for any subset of the B, of course of density uh, one half and smaller. And moreover, if one calculate uh, the worst cases, uh, then uh, uh, he obtains the following lower, universal lower bound for Wiener norm of the characteristic function of A. So, to obtain our uh, theorems three, uh, we apply methods of additive combinatorics. Recall the following about uh, our lemon additive relations and consider just uh, the case of k equals 2. Uh, Tk, it's the number of solutions of this equation, is called the additive energy in additive combinatorics. So our lemma says 
the derivative energy of any set with small norm is large. After that, we apply balog semi gauss theorem, uh, which says that, that any mm, set with large additive energy contains uh, a subset, a large subset, which is uh, which has small some set. So that is the set of all sums between elements a star uh, plus a star, and uh, these sets are called sets with small doubling. So any set of uh, any set uh, with small Wiener norm contains a subset which has small doubling. Examples of sets of uh, with, with small doubling are arithmetic progressions, uh, generalized arithmetic progressions, which are just uh, some sets of arithmetic progressions, maybe with different dif uh, differences, uh, and a uh, large subset of these objects. So uh, sets with small doubling are really additive rich sets of uh, uh, FP. And we want to use this fact. We want to use the structure of my sets with small uh, Wiener norm. There is a beautiful result of Raymond who gives us a much precise structure of sets with small uh, doubling. Uh, it says basically that any set of small doubling is a dense subset of some uh, generalized arithmetic progression. The most important thing here is that D and C, the density of my set in these arithmetic progressions, are functions which depend on K only and not on A or the size of group and so on. So in some sense, Wiener uh, Freeman uh, theorem is a full descriptions, description of uh, sets having uh, small doubling. And a modern form of Wiener of uh, sorry of Freeman uh, theorem is uh, uh, the following result of Kanyagin. Suppose that if we have a set with small doubling, then my constant uh, constants D and C from the previous slide uh, can be chosen in the following way. That's very good uh, estimate actually because uh, lower bound for dimension is just log. So uh, the question is about this three. Here. And finally, uh, combining all previous additive combinatorial tools, we obtain the following uh, theorem about the structure of a set with small uh, Wiener norm. It's um, uh, another structural result, not uh, Green and Sanders one, but more uh, quantitative. So suppose that we have a set with small Dublin, then uh, there is M of such form, and uh, a shift of A such that the dilation of this shift leaves, or more precisely, uh, more precisely intersect this segment uh, with um, good proportion, with good probability, with good density. So uh, any uh, set with uh, small Wiener norm has a subset who leaves in small segment of uh, uh, FP uh, densely. After that, uh, of course, it's, it's, it's a result about subs subsets, not about the original set A. But some tools from uh, theory of functions plus uh, some combinatorial observation allows us to use this information to obtain our theorem, uh, our theorem Okay, let me show you just one ap application of this uh, technique. So let's recall you, uh, l let me recall you uh, the definitions. We have a set, uh, we have a function and uh, also Fourier transform of it. 
Wiener norm and the Banach algebra, then there is a very interesting result of Bell and Helsen who uh, says the following. Suppose that we have a sequence of functions e to the uh, i and phi, such that Wiener norms of these functions are bounded. Then it implies that uh, the structure of phi is really rigid. Phi of t equals just nu of t plus uh, phi of zero. One moment. Uh, it has a nice corollary that uh, uh, there is a full description of endomorphisms of this Banach algebra. These, are, uh, these endomorphisms are just trivial ones. So uh, these endomorphisms uh, have the following form. And uh, two means. And uh, uh, there is a beautiful conjecture of Kahan who says that actually if one uh, replace this uh, condition from Bellic health and theorem onto the weak condition, it, its weak condition uh, implies that uh, phi is a linear function in the previous sense. And if this uh, uh, conjecture uh, holds, then it's tied. This logarithm here more or less corresponds to logarithm in literal conjecture, more or less. And uh, it was proved two years ago by Lebedev uh, that, uh, it, and it was the first uh, quantitative result in the direction that actually uh, one can uh, uh, write this double log estimate, and this implies that phi is a linear function. He used uh, the additive combinatorics in the proof. Uh, moro uh, moreover, he uh, showed that this condition can be, this condition can be uh, reformulated in the sense of uh, up bound of, in the sense that some set of um, uh, Fp has small uh, Wiener norm, and after that he applied Sanders' result. So uh, we reduce one logarithm here, and so the question about uh, Kahan conjecture is just the question about this constant 1 over 22. Uh, in the proof, he used uh, additive dimension and uh, tools from additive combinatorics. I'll skip the details. Thank you for your attention.